And now, we bring you Evangelistic Outreach with Evangelist Calvin Evans. The fields are white, already to harvest. From Southern Ohio, the Evangelistic Outreach team is reaching out across America and in many parts of the world with the gospel message of Christ through radio, television, the printed page, special missionary projects, and evangelistic crusades. This ministry of faith is dedicated to the cause of reaching the unreached for Christ through evangelism. And now, here is the director of Evangelistic Outreach, Calvin Ray Evans. Well, it's great to be with you today. We have some special things in store for you. You don't want to miss the program. I want to tell you about some great services coming up, and you'll want to write those meetings down. So be sure to look up something, to jot it down when we talk about it midway through the program. But right now, let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you again for the opportunity that you have given to us to be able to share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. All the power of the gospel goes beyond our human comprehension. The fact that it's the gospel that changes the lives of people when they obey the gospel, hear the gospel, heed the gospel, what a difference it makes. So we know, Lord, that once again you'll honor your word. It never returns void. It always accomplishes what it's sent out to do. And I know the power is in the gospel to change lives today. So for that one that maybe just stumbled along on the channels and now tuned in the program, I pray the message will stir their heart. For that one that watches faithfully week after week, let this be a channel of blessing to them today. Oh Lord, thank you for being so good to us. Thank you for what you've done in recent days in the meeting and our meetings and our friends that have rallied around us in prayer and what they have done to help this outreach. Lord, we just pray that we'll use this, uh, this opportunity again today to tell them that Jesus saves. Thank you again for your mercy and your grace. We ask your blessings on the program now in Jesus' name and amen. Well, we want to start things off with a number in song. Long before the fall of man, God designed a master plan. He exchanged the sinner for the sinless one. Jesus left his throne on high came to earth to bleed and die he said father not my will but thine be done he He's prepared for us a place Words cannot describe the matchless beauty there We will praise the perfect Lamb King of kings, the great I Am He has made the joys of heaven ours to share
Well, we had a tremendous memorial camp meeting, and I want to thank those of you that took the time to pray for the meeting, attend the meeting, support the meeting. What a great, great camp meeting we had to honor mom and dad, and I cannot tell you how much we appreciate you. There was an average attendance of 1,029 each night of the meeting. Four precious souls were saved, and the way that the glory of the Lord overshadowed the big tabernacle there, we just appreciate you so much. And I appreciate the Christian Baptist Association for letting us use their facilities there. What a time we had. And we thank you for praying for us. And we thank you for the support that you lend to this ministry. You know, really, it is an investment, but it, re it repays with dividends that's out of this world. And thank you for giving us unto the Lord. We're now in the middle of the new building project. I can't emphasize that enough. And my, the need that we have for people to rally to that cause. You know, God may have been exceptionally good to you in your business, in your personal finances, and maybe you have suddenly been blessed with an added blessing of finances that you didn't even expect. And you're wondering, what can I do to help out? You could be a tremendous help to us by sending a special gift this week for the new ministry building office. The office is going up now and we really, really need your help. So just contact us right away. We'll give you the address in just a moment. And then too, we wanna to take this opportunity to let you know about a camp meeting going on this week that we'd love for you to be a part of. Of course, we're there at the Canaan Land Free Will Baptist Church at Grove City, Ohio. I'll be preaching there on Monday night. I'm only preaching one night at the camp meeting on Monday night at seven o'clock. Sean Beauchamp is the pastor. That's Roger Duncan's nephew. And we certainly invite you to come and be a part of the big camp meeting there at the Canaan Land Free Will Baptist Church. We appreciate our friends coming together with us. We love to worship together with you. So come and worship with us. And then also we'll be looking soon at the big homecoming revival at our home church at the Rubyville Community Church. Starts on the first Sunday of October and then we'll carry right on down through Wednesday night. Services are on Sunday at 9.30 a.m. and then at 7.30 p.m. that evening and in the afternoon we have a special service. The Lore family will be singing at two o'clock in the afternoon. We have lunch around noon and we just invite you to come in, spend the day with us, then 7.30 each evening through Wednesday evening. We'll be honored to have Mike Blanton in to preach, Mike McCoy in to preach, and also Roger Duncan in to preach. And we just thought this would be a great opportunity to share a little bit about the meeting with you. And if you need more information, feel free to contact us. Our mailing address, Calvin Evans, Pedro, Ohio, zip code 45659. Or you can call us toll free 1-800-767-8713 or visit us on the World Wide Web at calvinevans.org. And to let you know what kind of a meeting we'll have, I thought it would be great to share part of a message from Roger Duncan that he preached this year at the Smoky Mountain Camp Meeting. Let's join Roger right now. give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. He sure is. Praise yes. God. For his mercy endure forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Two words in that second verse I want to use tonight for a thought. Say so. Say so. Let's pray. God thank you for your goodness and thank God we can close now and go home and say it's been a glorious camp meeting. But God, for a few minutes tonight, we need your anointing, God. I know, Lord, without your presence, what I'd say would be a waste of time. But you have said you can use weak things and even foolish things. And you ask God tonight that you'd anoint us with your spirit. Give us, as John said, the unction for the Holy One. Speak to hearts, God. Thank you for these that have come to praise you. God, how we're thankful for our friends, Lord, and we praise you, bless them. Lord, anoint me and use me, I pray, and I'll thank and praise you. In everything, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You can be seated. <clears throat> Most Bible scholars believe that this psalm was written to celebrate the return of the Jews from the Babylonian captivity. After 70 years, imagine, after 70 long years of being away from the land that they loved, 
after serving as slaves to the sinful Babylonians, God had set them free. Praise God. They were back home. And the psalmist said, after God has redeemed you, after God has released you, after God has returned you, you ought to say so. Praise God. You ought to, you ought to tell all the world what God has done for you. And the same could be said of every Christian here tonight. Praise God. We were in sin, lost and away from God. Paul said, ye hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. Brother, we were dead and we were devilish and all these things, but thank God Jesus came and paid the price that we could be saved. Redeemed us, thank God, from sin. We were sinners and we were slaves. Brother, they, these were slaves that had been set free. I thought of old Onesimus, praise God, in the little book of fine name. I thought about preaching on that, but I, and went a little different way. But anyway, brother, he was a slave. Onesimus was a slave that had stolen from his master. And I just stole this in, passing by that little book. There's three pictures in it. We see a picture of fallen man as the slave steals from his master and, and flees to Rome. A picture of fallen man. Every one of us, spiritually speaking, were slaves. And, and then we see a picture of a faithful mediator as Paul mediated his case. Praise God. And then we see a picture of a forgiven master. We really don't know the, the end of that story, but praise God, I believe that he set him free. I believe he set You know, let me throw, I gotta get, get off this now. Cause, but anyway, Paul began that epistle by saying, I beseech you for my son Onesimus. And brother, I've preached that for years and read it numerous times and I never noticed that Paul called him a son. Whew, praise God. He didn't call him a slave, though he was. He said, I beseech you for my son Onesimus, whom I've begotten in my bonds. Praise God. Amen. No wonder John said to Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon you, that ye should be called the sons of God. Praise God. That's shouting grounds. Well, but praise God. He set us free, thank the Lord. And we see in Psalm 137 uh, how they felt back here in Babylon. And Psalm 137 says, By the rivers of Babylon, we sit down and wept when we remember Zion. We hanged our harps on the willows. For those that carried us away said, sing us one of the songs of Zion. But they said, how could we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? You know what had happened to those people? The same thing that's happened to too many Christians today. They have lost their song. But the many of them have lost their song. Thank God. God's people have always been a singing people. And I can't sing. I never did, was able to sing much, but Lately, with what I got, man, my voice is affected. I can't sing a lick. But praise God, I still got a song down in my heart. Thank God, brother. They had lost their song. They said, how, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? They had lost their song. Oh, uh, Uncle Bud Robinson put it this way. He said, when God saved me, he set the birds to sing in my heart. And there was honeysuckles growing on the back fence of my soul. And the little bees had come and draw nectar from the blossoms. Uncle Bud Robinson went over to a railroad station. He had a ticket. And the man said, Uncle Bud, that ticket's no good. He said, yes, it is. The fellow said, no, it isn't. And they got in a little argument. Uncle Bud kind of shouted at him. He said, I, I said, it's good. And Uncle Bud said, well, I spoke to that man that way. He said, the birds stopped singing. And Uncle Bud went across to the hotel and the man said, Uncle Bud, you didn't speak right to that man. He said, I know it, I'm going back, a big man. Yeah. Praise God, I'm going back. He went back and, and told the man, shook his hand. He said, sir, 
I'm, I'm a Christian. I'm sorry for the way I spoke to you. And the man said, reached out his hand and said, you're forgiven. And Uncle Buddy said, the bird started singing again. <laughs> Glory to God forever. I'm telling you tonight, folks, if the birds had stopped singing in my life, Brother Jack, I'd make my way to this old-fashioned altar and praise God, find peace for my soul. Thank the Lord forever. Praise God. They had lost their song. All right, I'm gonna be quick because we've got a great man coming up. But if God has saved your soul, you ought to say so. And it's a very simple song. If God has saved your soul, you ought to say so. On November the 17th, 1876, in a small primitive Methodist church, a little 16-year-old 16 year old boy made his way to the altar and gave his life to Jesus. He said, as I was praying, I heard two women talking near, near me and they said, oh, it's only a little gypsy boy, as if it didn't matter. But he was sincere, and he gave his heart to Jesus. A year later, he was called to preach, and he stood to preach his first sermon. And of course, he was nervous. Brother, I'm, I shake for two reasons. I'm nervous, and I have Parkinson's disease. But anyway, that's all right, bless God. I'm, the shake. I'm on a good foundation, praise God. I'm on the rock, thank the Lord forever. Praise God. But he, he was, a year later he was called to preach and he stood and preached his first sermon and he was nervous and the fellow trying to encourage him said, son, keep your heart up. He said, my heart's in my throat already. How high do you want it? <laughs> Bless God. You know, God used that little, he, everybody called him Gypsy Smith. God used him for nearly 70 years to preach a gospel all over the world. And a man came to him and he said, Gypsy, I heard you preach as a boy many years, almost 70 years ago. And I don't understand, he said, tonight you preach with the same Brother Parsons' zeal and enthusiasm and love and anointing as you did when you was a boy. He said, how have you been able to do it? And said, the old man of God now stooped with age when the twinkle in his eye said, I never lost a wonder. Well, praise God. I've never lost a wonder. Thank God for you. Praise, if we ever get over him saving us, folks, we're in trouble, thank God. And Gypsy Smith used to say, I've not been to your colleges. Praise God, but I've been to the cross. No bishop ever put his hand on my head, but Jesus put his hand on my heart. I can't take the telescope and name the stars, but I've seen the star Bethlehem. I've never studied botany, and I can't name the different flowers, but I've smelled the perfume of the rose of Sharon. He said, I've never studied geology, but my feet are planted firmly on the rock of ages and all other ground and sinking sand. Glory to God forever. If the Lord has saved you, you ought to say so. Brother, thank God. And if God has saved you, there will be a difference in your life. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Brother, let me throw this in real quick. The, the people of Israel, God's people, they were different in every way, and, and we're to be different. Amen. I know that's not, not popular today, but I believe this crowd will amen. Brother, if God has saved them, there ought to be a change. There ought to be a change. I believe it. Thank God. The people of Israel had a different deity. They served a different God. I talked to a Hindu some time ago and invited her to church. Then bought up every restaurant and store in our area, I guess, across the United States. They bought them about all. But I invited her to church. And she kind of got a little smart with me. She said, I was born a Hindu and I'll die a Hindu. She said, there's only one God. But you know what? She was wrong. There's a lot of gods out there. Amen. I can prove it. In Joshua 24, Joshua is getting ready to die. And they called Israel together and the, the tribes and the people. And Joshua said, I want you to choose who you're going to serve. Are you going to serve the gods, small g, small o, small d, small s? Gods. You're going to serve the gods that your father served on the other side of the flood? But as for me and my house, 
we're going to serve the Lord. Praise God. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. That's the way that's spelled. He said, I'm going to serve the Lord. That's Jehovah. Now, brother, there's your one God. But they had many gods. They had many gods. But praise God for the true and living God. Thank the Lord forever. He's better than Buddha. Yes, he is. He's mightier than Mohammed. Praise God. He's more righteous than Reverend Moon. And he's got more bucks than Benny Hinn. Amen. I just sow that in too. Praise God forever. Thank the Lord. Israel had a different deity. They had a different God. Israel had a different diet. Brother, they ate differently than the rest of the world. And God laid down their diet in, 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 his, in his book. Praise God. In Leviticus chapter 11, God gave Israel a list of things that they could and could not eat. God said, don't feed upon the raven. He's a scavenger. God said, don't eat after the raven. And then he said, don't eat after the owl and the night hawk. They're creatures of the dark. Don't eat them. Bless God, we have enough Christians that are in darkness. We don't need to feed them, be around them, thank the Lord. And then God said, don't feed on the cuckoo bird. The cuckoo bird's a crazy bird. <laughs> I'm suddenly little. You know the amazing thing about the cuckoo bird? Some of you know this, but anyway, act like you don't. Uh, they said, the cuckoo bird will lay its eggs in another bird's nest and allow that bird to hatch her eggs and then they'll kick the, the, the other birds out of the nest and the little cuckoo birds are larger and stronger and so they feed them. She allows somebody else to raise her family. Praise God. Now I'll let you take that. You preachers take it for what it's worth. <laughs> Amen. But don't feed on the cuckoo bird. Praise God. And then God said, don't feed on the bat. Now, out of everything God lists, a bat be last on my list. <laughs> a bat is half bird, half rat. It's a rat with wings. Don't feed on the bat. Praise God, I'll never have to worry about me eating the bat. I'm glad God didn't say don't eat chicken. I got a friend, he said, I woke up one morning feeling lazy and craving chicken and thought for sure I was called to preach. <laughs> I like chicken too. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> I was at the hospital one day and a woman got on the elevator and she had a clipboard and she punched me in the stomach. And she said, how about moving that beer belly so I can get on? I said, ma'am, I have you know I'm a gospel preacher. She said, oh, how about moving that chicken coop? <laughs> that all right? I, I'll throw this in and I have to get along. They said a fellow was driving down the interstate 70 mile an hour and the chicken passed him. He said, Lord, what in the world? And he followed the chicken and got off of the next and he just followed up in the barnyard. And the old farmer come out and he said, man, that chicken passed me doing, I was going 70 miles. He said, yeah, yeah they're fast. He said, uh, it's got three legs. He said, yeah, I'll tell you what, the reason it's got three legs. He said, it's mama, me, and the boy. We all like drumsticks. <laughs> and he said, I crossed Brandon and, and got a chicken with three legs. He said, how do they taste? He said, we can't catch them. <laughs> so, praise God. <laughs> Israel had a different deity. Israel had a different diet. Israel had a different dress. Yeah. Now, brother, the world says today, in the worldly church, they said, don't matter what you wear to church. Brother, it does matter. It mattered to God. Yes, it did. Thank God. God said in Numbers 15, 38, when you make a garment, 
God said, put a red, ribbon of blue in the border of the hem of the garment. Yeah. So you look at it every time you put it on. You look at it and remember the commandments of the Lord. Yeah. Praise God every time that little Jewish boy or girl put that garment on, they'd see that hem, that, that blue hem in the border of that garment, and then remember the commandments of the Lord. Thank God. And when Jesus in Mark chapter 5, the woman with the issue of blood said, If I, she saw that hem in his garment, and she said, If I can just touch the hem of his garment, thank God, I know I'll be made whole. I told our church many times, I said, It wasn't the H E M of the garment, it was the H I M in the garment. Praise God, that's where the difference was. Thank God. But I believe this the Bible said to that we're to dress modestly, amen. And God does care what we wear, and I'll leave the rest of your pastor to, to straighten all that out. And they had a different deity, different diet, different dress, and a different destination, bless God. They were headed to the promised land. Thank the Lord, Second Corinthians six seventeen says, come out from among them and be ye separate saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I'll be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters. Then the Bible says, love not in the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, I'll have no part with him. Thank God we're to live a separate life. First Peter 2, 9 says, ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, thank God. Certainly blessed to have Roger Duncan on the program today. A sermon he preached at the Smoky Mountain Camp meeting entitled Say So, and that is truly our prayer today. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And we know that the Lord is with us and he is going to be with us. We thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your support. And we are excited to know what God and to see what God is going to do this week in the camp meetings up at the Canaan Free Will Baptist Church and then our homecoming revival at the Riverville Community Church starting next Sunday. Looking forward to those great meetings. If you need more information about any of this ministry, whether it be our audio sermons, our television programming, you can always visit our website at calvinevans.org. We have plenty of information there where you can order this month's free gift offer and know about all of our upcoming meetings and as well listen to hundreds of audio sermons absolutely free of charge. So again, our, our web address is calvinevans.org. Thank you so much for tuning in today. You won't want to miss next week's broadcast. May God bless you and yours is our prayer. It's been a joy to share with you another evangelistic outreach program. This is a ministry of faith made possible by its many friends in Christ. Please address all mail regarding this program to Calvin Evans, Pedro, Ohio, 45659. Again, that address is Calvin Evans, Pedro, Ohio, 45659. And be sure to mention you heard the program on this station. It's